Ken Reed here, TV Guidance Counselor, and travel back in time with me to the second week of November 1987, 35 short years ago, and let's see what HBO has to offer us this week. Next, aromatic herbs and Arab money. From car washers to crawling cross-country couriers, Cheech and Chong make their way to Vegas and find that things are tough all over. Next. Confession time. I've never seen an entire Cheech and Chong movie, and I don't know if I would enjoy it, to be honest with you. Uh, also, never even heard of this one. All I know about Things Are Tough All Over is the uh, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band song. I think that's who did it. From Narragansett, Rhode Island, everybody. They sound exactly like Bruce Springsteen did the Eddie and the Cruiser soundtrack. That's all I know. I am not interested in watching this. So, I have a black box and a satellite for no reason thus far. HBO this week in 1987 make me make me uh make me feel better about breaking the law here. Hi, I'm Louis Anderson and I've just signed on for Comic Relief 87. Maybe you remember last year's Comic Relief, a live event on HBO where most of America's funny people and uh, of course you at home gathered together to prove that laughter could lend a helping hand. Sure enough, last year's Comic Relief distributed. 2.6 million dollars to America's homeless. But since these people still need our help, the nation's comedy family will join forces again, live, on the night of November 14th on HBO. It'll be a night to remember. Don't miss it, Comic Relief 87. It's a sign of the times. I loved Comic Relief. It wasn't always terribly funny, but it was like the infinity war of 80s stand-up comedy. Uh, and God, I miss Louis Anderson. What a great dude. Um, this is this commercial is not funny in the least, and he's so sincere, it almost seems like it's mock sincere, but he's being genuinely sincere. He was a great dude. Uh, also, I noticed that bowling shirt he's wearing is made by a company named King Louie, uh, who makes the best bowling shirts, and that's a bit of knowledge that I shouldn't have in my head, but I do. Uh, I would 100% watch this. This is worth it. I used to donate every year, even though I was a kid. I would, I would save some money from various schemes that I ran. So HBO, you've you've earned my uh, my respect, and I don't feel as bad about breaking the law now. Although now I'm in the hole some money because, you know, you. Although I'm stealing HBO, so you know maybe maybe it's a wash. Uh, what else you got? Super Saturdays on HBO. They mean maximum intensity with super movies. I like the sound of that. Today, Mia Farrow, Michael Caine. Woody Allen. I don't know if you remember me, but we had the worst night of my life together. Love. Allie, Lee, but don't. Lee, Lee, I'm in love with you. Midlife crises. You want my husband to have a child with you? Anna yeah. and her sisters. Ben. We present the Golden Calf Award for the most unoriginal idea for a motion picture. It's not necessarily the news. Inside Entertainment. Coming up on the next Super Saturday, November 7th. Thanks, America. HBO is 15 years young, and we're celebrating with five great movies starting Sunday, November 8th. First, an urban cowboy, John Travolta meets Deborah Winger, and the sparks fly high. I'll prove it. I'll. Then on the ninth, comedy marches in with Bill Murray and friends in Stripes. Stewardess, is there a movie on this flight? On the 10th, catch airplane, but watch that flying guitar. Roger. Good luck. It's perfectly normal. On the 11th, join Jane Fonda. We're going to focus on nuclear power. Jack Lemmon and Michael Douglas in the China Syndrome. Let this maniac wash out a billion dollar investment. Then on the 12th, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy team up in 48 hours. He's crazy now, we just love it. Anything I've done and you're dead. You're going to be sorry you ever met me. I'm already sorry. Five of your favorite movies for five consecutive nights starting at 9, 8 central. In November, celebrate HBO's 15th anniversary with a blast. Hannah and her sisters? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, would look boring and not enjoyable even if Woody Allen wasn't a complete creep who makes movies about his indiscretions. Uh, and I think that movie, he's with like a teenage girl with, played by Stacey Nelkin, I think. Either way, creep, by nope. Uh, not necessarily the news, however. A okay, all on board there. Conan O'Brien's first writing gig, although I don't think he was still. No, I know he wasn't still writing in '87. He moved on to Saturday Night Live, but still, a, you know, a fun show at the time. Seemed very irreverent, and I enjoyed it. What else you got, HBO? I mean, happy 15th birthday, HBO. Start in 1972, which is insane. Uh, it, it's more than twice as old as I am at this point in 1987. Um, but this seems like a real lackluster celebration. They're showing a different movie every night, 
which they did anyway. And there is no connecting thread with these movies. Uh, I think three and a half of them are comedies. Urban Cowboy is debatable. But you get like Airplane, 48 Hours, Stripes, and then The China Syndrome. A terrifying movie <laughs> about corporate greed leading to radioactive death. Uh, I mean, quality movie, but not really celebratory. Uh, celebratory? I forget which one's celebration and which one's being celibate, uh, which, depending on who you are, could be the opposite of celebration. Anyway, you know, whatever. You've basically told us it's a celebration, even though you're just doing what you already do anyway. And these movies are fine, but you've made me angry, HBO. It's HBO's 15th anniversary, and as part of the celebration, they're premiering a new HBO picture, Laguna Heat. <laughs> You know, I don't think that we've been introduced. Watch out for yourself, Tom Shepard. Fires aren't out yet. Well, I thought you should know that the guy in the papers is here. At least I think it's him. Room 208. John Dixon. Older guy, gray hair, and uh, blue eyes. You don't feel good looking at him. Please! Stop it! Dream, dream, dream. HBO Pictures. Movies made the way they should be. Now we're talking, all right? I don't know anything about Laguna Heat, but this is a celebration. This is made for HBO, so you're only going to see it here. There's a Burning Man. It's clearly some kind of Miami Vice ripoff, but that's how you celebrate. Uh, also, for the record, the two best made for HBO movies are Cast a Deadly Spell and Total Eclipse, where Mario Van Peebles plays a mutant werewolf cop. What else we got? All right, if you just told me White Knights was on, I would absolutely not be interested because all I knew about this was it was about dancing and Barishnikov was in it, who I always confuse with Kalishnikov, which is a machine gun. But I had never seen the trailer for this. I, I don't think there was like a Phil Collins song. This looks amazing just based on this trailer. Like there's plane crashes and exploding planes and, you know, cut zooms on Lennon. Like I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of on board. This might be the best Gregory Hines movie uh, since Wolfen, or, you know, maybe the best one till Eve of Destruction. If the question is about celebrities, the answer can be found on HBO Q&A. Harry Hamlin has a hot role in Laguna Heat in November on HBO. He's had success on stage, television, and film, but how did he get started in acting? When I was in college, I wanted to be an architect, but I found when I arrived at, the, at Berkeley, where I was a freshman, that there were no classes in architecture that had seats available. So uh, in a rush to register, because I was a little late, uh, the closest building to where I was was the drama department. I ran over there and registered in four drama classes for my freshman year, and that was really it. I got into acting because I didn't plan well and I'm lazy? Okay. O.J. Simpson turns in his youth. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, good Lord. Um... All right, what are you going to ask O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson turns in his uniform to star in HBO's First and Ten. Do fans ever confuse this real-life football hero with his TV role as a coach? As a matter of fact, I think most people see me as, as T.D. Parker anyway, my, the way I am live. So it's really not a stretch. So the, it, I'm accepted right away as T.D. Parker. 
As a matter of fact, when I walk down the street now, a lot of people say, hey, TD, what's going on? Well, lucky for you, OJ. No one thinks you're T.D. Parker anymore. They just think of you as a murderer. Steve Gutenberg gives an electric performance in Short Circuit on HBO in November. Thank God we're ending on Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg, in all ways, is the anti-O.J. Simpson. Like, if we ever find out some monstrous story about Steve Gutenberg... What little faith I have left in humanity will be completely eroded. Steve Gutenberg gives an electric performance in Short Circuit on HBO in November. How does he react to critics' reviews of his acting? I don't read reviews, and I try not to hear them. But if I do hear about them, they aren't too favorable. I react to them pretty much as I would to a, a good review. Almost, as, almost like I re react to a good review. I probably take the bad reviews, if I hear them, a little more seriously. But success is as much an illusion as failure is. And uh, I don't think you should take either too seriously. This is HBO Q&A. All right, Gutenberg. Uh, I feel like that little bit of life advice should be in a self-help book that you put out called the Gutenberg Bible. And you can have that idea for free. Anyway, that's HBO, the second week of November 1987, and uh, this week, it's fine. Uh, I guess I'll keep my black box. My senile cat's yelling, so I gotta go.